Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Time for another guide on rushing the ruins in Don't Starve Together. Now, recently you all voted for me to rush the ruins as Wormwood. I thought this was an excellent choice because a lot of Wormwood's advantages and disadvantages come directly into play inside the ruins. So the big thing about Wormwood is that food does not affect his health. Obviously this works as an advantage when eating food that normally affects your health. So Wormwood can just smash red caps like they're carrots. Unfortunately this is also a really big disadvantage because Wormwood cannot benefit from any healing foods. Now blue caps are traditionally one of the more popular options for healing during a ruins rush, but Wormwood can't benefit from those, so we're going to be looking for other non-food healing sources. However, Wormwood would still be able to slam monster meat without worrying about his health, so I did not anticipate food being a problem. Alright, so I'm going to give you a synopsis of the 26-day run I did over on Twitch, which consists of the ruins rush and three bosses killed. I will also post the full broadcast of the run for anyone who's interested in watching. It was pretty educational for me. Okay, day one was pretty typical, just grabbing the basic stuff, grass, twigs, flint. I did find two moleworms in the starter biome, so I grabbed those right away. It's definitely a bummer having those two inventory slots taken up for a while, but it is so beneficial to eventually have moggles during a rush, especially when you're playing as a character who's trying to avoid taking damage. I'm also collecting niter and a bunch of petals, because I want to convert a wear pig and farm at least a stack of manure before going down into the caves just so that I can make some compost wraps once I get a hold of rot. Yes, picking flowers hurts wormwood sanity, but we're going to be doing a bunch of prototyping soon, so sanity is not going to be a problem for very long. Day two, we found a deciduous biome and some gold, so the science machine gets prototyped. We also found a wormhole that leads to a forest with a sinkhole in it. This was perfect because that forest has spiders and pigs, which will provide everything we need before cracking into the caves. So I put my science machine down at the cave entrance and I craft my backpack and a spear. Then I get to smacking some spiders. The glands I'm going to save to make healing salves, which will be a good backup healing source in the ruins. And also, I need four monster meat to convert a were pig, and the rest of the monster meat can just be a backup food source. The pig houses I'm gonna smash for supplies. So, the boards and the cut stone, we're gonna use those to make alchemy engines. The pig skin, we're gonna use to make football helmets and ham bats. And the pigs are gonna give us meat for the ham bats, so nothing gets wasted. So, 35 manure is a pretty good start. I can make seven compost wraps with that, as long as I hold off on healing with the manure. And if I need more manure, remember there's always the spelunkies down in the caves. With the extra monster meat, I actually decided to convert another were pig so that I could get a little bit more skin and meat. Can't hurt, right? Alright, before popping down into the caves, I prototype my healing salves and alchemy engine. And then once I get down to the caves, I pick a couple light bulbs and put down the alchemy engine, make a football helmet, and my lantern. I'm also cooking up the berries that I have so that they will turn to rot faster and I can use those soon for compost wraps. I'm holding off on making my first hand bat now because I don't really need it spoiling on me while I'm busy exploring the caves. Besides, I'm going to be making another alchemy engine after I get my first glowberry to make the moggles. Then I just hammered the engine, pre-built the next one. Time to start exploring. I'm stopping at a rabbit village while I'm here just to gather a little bit of extra carrots and two puffs. Right, two puffs. These will be used to make a fur roll, which Wormwood could use for three emergency heals later on. It's basically a mobile tent. Oh no, the vegans are enraged. They probably watch me murder their friend from the safety of their rabbit hutches. How brave of them. I was going to leave y'all alone, but if you're going to be like that, time for civil war. I will gladly take the extra meat and carrots. Now, unfortunately, my way to the center of the map was barred by an area I officially coined the stupid biome. It's also referred to as the stalagmite terrain, which consists of tons of stalagmites and spalagmites. It's generally a pain in the butt to traverse without triggering a bunch of spiders. Well, I'll take the extra gland, I guess. Alright, on to the muddy biome. And, first sign of slurpers and lichen means we found the wilds biome. Time to set down our alchemy engine and prototype our hambat. And then I got a little too excited and aggroed some nightmare creatures during the nightmare phase and ended up getting chased by two worms and a bunch of nightmare creatures. Do as I say, not as I do. Try to take care of the nightmare creatures first because they keep their aggro on you longer and they're a little bit faster than the depth worms. But crisis averted, we got our first glowberry. 
time to make these boggles. These are so useful down here, especially when you're playing as a character where you're trying to avoid direct combat as much as possible. Having a clear line of sight just means you can see the enemies before they're right on top of you. I also prototyped an opulent pickaxe for ruins clearing, and the berries that turn to rot, I get to use those in compost routes. I also made the fur roll. Honestly, I have never made a fur roll before, so we'll see how this goes. Before I head in, I pick a little bit of lichen just to make sure I have some stuff rotting for the next round of compost traps. Now that the nightmare phase just ended, it's probably a good time to hoof it through the village biome while the monkeys are not going to death train me. Ooh, I could even smash a couple of their pods for some extra manure. I say let them throw their poop at me, I'll take the healing. It only cost me sanity, but we're in the ruins, so we're going to crazy town regardless. A few of them did chase me all the way into the ruins, and if we're being honest, there's nothing I enjoy more than using a rook to play a quick game of monkey dominoes. Before doing too much clearing, I want to find the location of the labyrinth and the completed ancient pseudoscience station. And you can see here that I'm doing a lot of quick switching between the moggles and the football helmet, because I'm trying not to take too much unprotected damage, but I do want to see what's coming up. Now here, I did spot a little bit of the labyrinth, but before I go in, I want to craft what I need to fight ancient guardian. The nightmare phase was starting back up, so I decided to stick around for a sec to farm a little bit of nightmare fuel, which I will need for crafting. Plus, it's generally not a good idea to go visit the monkeys during this time. Alright, right here, I made a almost fatal boo-boo, where I cornered myself with a bishop aggroed and super low football helmet. I got out of there, but I lost more than half of my health. So okay, it seemed like a good time to roll out the fur roll and sleep off the rest of the nightmare phase. It was actually really nice not having to dig into my healing supply for this one, because one use restored most of my health. And then I head back to the ruins to do a little bit of clearing. I'm looking for two yellow gems and a green gem so that I could make both a star collar staff and a magiluminescence. Plus I'm also going to want a bit of nightmare fuel and thulacite. I found my first yellow gem right here, which was nice. I really like using the Rook to clear the broken clockworks, and wearing the Moggles means you're going to be able to choreograph them a little more effectively. But you still gotta be quick with the football helmet if there's damage incoming. I did poke my head into the labyrinth momentarily in the hopes of finding a Bat Bat, which for Wormwood is a really good source of healing. I didn't get lucky this time, but I did find some green gems in Thulacite, which is pretty nice, and I also grabbed my second yellow gem around this time. And in the next branch of the ruins, we found the pseudoscience station set piece. Now there's always going to be two bishops guarding it, and most of the time I just resolve to tank them as quickly as possible without taking too much damage. Do not approach this set piece during the nightmare phase, or you're just going to be swarmed by shadow creatures. That was a lot of damage taken, but okay, the station got cleared. First thing I want to make is a construction amulet, which can be worn to half the requirements of any crafting recipe. Then Wormwood is going to chop three living logs off of his arm and use a couple compost wraps to heal. Wearing the green amulet, I can now craft my Magiluminescence, my Star Collar Staff, and my Thulacite Crown. Perfect. Time to go fight Emo Minotaur. But first, a little bit of sleep at the entrance to the labyrinth just to top off my health and restore a little bit of sanity. You want to try to avoid being insane in the labyrinth because nightmare creatures can trigger the cave spiders if they step on the creep, and you can just end up with a big mess of spiders. Once I found Agent Guardian, I threw up my Dwarf Star and equipped all my gear. The combination of the club and the Magiluminescence gives me a 30% speed boost, which is just enough to be able to dodge his attacks and sneak in a couple of hits. I still used a fresh hand bat to deliver the actual damage, just because the club summons shadow tentacles which kind of interrupt the flow of this battle. Besides, I'd rather save the club for future fights with bosses that don't move around as much. This is actually a pretty challenging fight not to cheese when you don't have a ton of speed boost, and it always feels like an accomplishment when you actually kill him. Just be sure to keep a couple pieces of nightmare fuel on hand to refuel the mag. Ancient Guardian is dead, and check out this loot. Green gems, a full thulacite suit, and a lazy explorer. Probably the best ornate chest loot I've ever seen. But I'm not quite done here yet. I want to craft a few more crowns before heading back up. So let's go pick off some more Shadow Spool Monkeys for some extra food and nightmare fuel. The Moggles are really important to use here for luring just a couple of monkeys over at a time. Back at the station we make another green amulet and craft two more Thulacite crowns. I would have liked to have made more, but we never found the statues. Plus, I have pretty much what I need to start fighting bosses on the surface. 
If I was going to stick around this world for a long time, I probably would have brought back more trinkets, gears, and gems. But for a runes rush, I would call this a pretty decent haul. And day 14, we got our very first depth worm wave. I would have preferred to fight them in a more open space, but with just two worms, it'll be fine. Just be sure to wear armor, because these dudes hit really hard. And try to line up their attacks so that you can get in as many hits as possible. If I was going to really try to use monkeys to generate a bunch of manure, I probably would have picked some lichen, given it to them, and then aggroed them. My guess is they have an inventory where food items get converted to poop, which they used to throw at me, but I didn't really stick around long enough to experiment. And back at the cave entrance, I used my fur roll for the third and final time. Honestly, I don't know that I would have made it out without it. It was so useful in a pinch, and I would recommend it for any character who can't benefit from eating blue caps. All right, back up at the surface. Time to get back to mapping out and hopefully finding the location of the Dragonfly Arena, which is going to be the first boss I want to fight. There's usually a couple of hound mounds to clear out around the arena. Plus, I can drop off all the gear that I won't need until the start of the fight. I also want to make some more compost wraps, so we were sure to visit the cows for some more crappy patties. Another thing I would really love for D-Fly is an ice staff, so we gotta trap some rabbits for a Presta Habitator. By the way, if Wormwood is hurting for sanity, you can always restore it easily by just digging and replanting a sapling over and over again. You lose 5 every time you dig it up, but you gain 10 when you replant. And considering all this method takes is a shovel, I'd say it's pretty powerful. All right, we finally get a blue gem out of one of the graveyards. Don't ask me why I didn't bring some from the ruins. I do not know. But I still haven't found the Pig King or the Glomer statue, and it's day 20, so it's time to set down the alchemy engine because we need to prototype a thermal stone, our Presta Hattitator, and some stone walls. Finally, we find the second deciduous biome, which was kind of tucked behind the Mandrake forest. Well, there's the pan flute. Time to go murder. So I really like to use an ice staff in this fight to dodge Dragonfly's first attack while she's moving towards you. The basic idea is to move into her attack range while she's stunned, then move out once she starts swinging at you. But that fight progressed as usual, two green gems is definitely a GG. From there we ran back to the deciduous biome and jumped straight into the Klaus fight. I can't tell you how nice it is to have Ruins gear for this fight. The Magiluminescence really comes in handy during the final phase when Klaus starts lunging at you, and the Starcaller staff just provides plenty of heat and light for any winter fight. Unfortunately, I think I blew all of my luck on that Ancient Guardian chest because this was one of the worst loot stashes I've ever seen. But that pretty much marked the end of Wormwood's early Ruins adventure. Honestly, most of the experience was about what I had expected, with health restoration being the biggest challenge. The manure was kind of a pain to get a hold of, and I think next time I did this, I would try to utilize the monkeys a little more for converting extra food into poop. The fur roll was a very unexpected surprise, and I would probably consider carrying one around as Wormwood even on the surface, just in case we got into a situation where we didn't have a lot of healing available. As challenging as the health issue was, I actually think that the food benefit almost counterbalanced that disadvantage. Had I stayed in the ruins longer, I probably would have benefited much more from that perk. Cause let's be honest, in a place where there's not a huge variety of food, it's so nice to not have to deal with a picky eater. Wormwood is just a garbage disposal unit. He can eat practically anything with no health penalty. Turns out to be a massive benefit in the ruins. Anyways, there you have it. Wormwood can most certainly rush the ruins. Uh, please let me know what you thought of the run, if I missed any potential strategies with this character, and tell me what character you want to see rush the ruins. And yes, I am still working on a general ruins rush guide, but I figured the more experience I can get rushing ruins with a variety of characters, the more I'll be able to present strategies that could apply to any character. Like I said, the full 26 day run will be posted in the description if anyone wants to watch it. I hope you enjoyed this guide, and I'll see you next time.